Good morning, Shannon. You are muted. I don't know where that's. I don't, know. I don't yet understand this system. Good morning, Bishop Vince. You, <laughs> you have to use sign language. Yeah, that's what we can do. Shannon, do you know when the diocese had a normal convention, how many folks showed up? Roughly. I don't. I want to say 200, yeah. 250. Yeah, these, I mean, the technical thing is nice, but it's not quite the same as being in the room. Is it? No, Bishop. <laughs> How many? We have eight minutes. Looks like it, yeah. I keep getting beeps and things. 101 on the call. I just got a note from Andrea saying there's 101 on the call right now. That's pretty amazing. It is for a call. <clears throat> that is amazing. I keep getting beeps and things. 101 on the call. I just got a note from Andrea saying there's 101 on the call right now. That's pretty amazing. It is for a call. <clears throat> just like to share with y'all, we're now live on YouTube. So panelists, just be mindful that whatever we say is now being shared live and if anybody you want to let people know in your households that they can watch the proceedings on YouTube. Thank you, Kristen.
Kristen, I'm having trouble with the YouTube feed. <clears throat> Mrs. Martin. Yes, Bishop. I'm having trouble with the YouTube feed. It says error or something. Um, Is it my I, system? That, that, I think so. Sorry okay. to say. No problem. Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna. Um, I'm getting several questions, so I just want to address them quickly before we begin. Um, there are some different buttons at the bottom of your screen than you saw in the last meeting, so you won't see your mute and um, your mute unmute button. And I, I don't know if you'll even see your camera button. I'm not an attendee, so I can't tell you exactly what you're seeing, but. Um, unless you raise your hand. And the raise hand function is the same as last time. You go to the participant button at the bottom of your screen and you can raise your hand from there at the bottom of the participant um, window. It says raise hand and you can raise it. Several of you have just toggled that. And when you raise your hand, um, I'm not calling on people right now, but if you were raising your hand during a question and answer time or when we're having discussion options um, from the floor, then I would be asking you to unmute. And at that time you would see a request to unmute. And then you'll have your little mute button back, I believe, so that you can um, mute yourself. So, so essentially talking is disabled on this call, except for the panelists. And the panelists are the people right now that you can see on your screen next to the slides um, that, that are our presentation slides. Whatever, Kristen, our host, has on her screen, that's what you're going to see on your screen. So you're not going to be able to change your screen as much this time, and you're not going to be able to talk um, or accidentally unmute yourself unless, unless you ask to be unmuted and we unmute you so that you can speak at the right appointed time, rather. Um, we hope that will make the meeting less um, distracting, that we won't have distracting noises in the background. Sometimes we accidentally get on onto the computer and don't realize that we're not muted, that kind of thing. Um, when you are asked to speak, if you take that opportunity, 
then you will be visible to everybody on our screen. We'll be able to see the person talking. So if you turn your camera on, we'll be able to see you. If you don't want to be seen, that's okay. You can keep your camera off, but just know <laughs> that if you have your camera on, we will be looking at you as you speak. So we'll go over these in the meeting. I just wanted to make sure that we touch base on it as we got started. It is nine o'clock. We have 146 attendees and 17 panelists and my math skills aren't that fast, but I think that's like, like 163 or something. So I think we're pretty close um, to the number that have registered. We had uh, maybe around 190 that were registered. Kristen, you wanna give me a nod if I'm close? Uh, more like 180. 180, okay. Um, so Jeff, is, would you like us to begin with morning prayer now? I think we should yes. wait one more minute. <clears throat> Is it okay, Jeff, if we wait one more minute? I would just wait one more minute because uh, people are going to be jumping on here uh, uh, probably through prayer. You want me to begin? Okay. Yes. I just need to confirm that the Reverend Jamie Russell is on the call since he's doing the responses. Let me make sure that we get them unmuted. Hang on just a moment. All right, Jamie, I've just asked you to unmute and also Andrew DeFusco, correct? Yes, he's the reader. And, oh, um, there we go. You're all set. Okay, let's pray. Oh, send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our King and Savior now draws near. O oh, come, let us adore him. Let's say together the Venite. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Our King and Savior now draws near. O oh, come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19, 7 through 14, 
We will read this responsibly by half verse. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. One second. Oh, sorry. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, than the drippings from the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant taught. And in keeping them, there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in the first verse. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to, Thanks God. Be to God. We'll respond to um, the reading with the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old. Next slide, please. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-living Father, you have given the Holy Spirit to abide with us forever. Bless, we pray, with the Holy Spirit's grace and presence, the bishops, priests, deacons, and all the laity who assemble in your name, that your church, being preserved in true faith and godly discipline, may fulfill the will of him who loved her and gave himself for her. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who now lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger, and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to pause for a moment and just allow you where you are to um, bring before the Lord any care or concern on your heart as we enter into this convention. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm delighted to greet you at this second half of your diocesan convention as you meet during the season of Advent, a season that is filled with hope. As you know, Advent is that time of year when we prepare to celebrate the first coming of Christ into the world. He came simply and quietly as a vulnerable baby in a borrowed manger in Bethlehem, and he was welcomed by the shepherds. It's a story that has universal appeal. It really is good news for the world. There is, of course, another dimension to the Advent season, getting ready for the second coming of Christ. And this time he will come in glory, accompanied by the heavenly host, and no one will ignore it. Now, does this second coming fill you with hope or dread? Do you even think about it at all? No question there has been and still is lots of false teaching on the subject, but we dare not dismiss it. Jesus believes in it passionately, and he is the author and perfecter of our faith. And every time we say the Nicene Creed, we declare he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. So what exactly does the Bible teach us about the second coming? Well, first of all, the Lord is coming back. Make no mistake about it. Secondly, we cannot possibly know when. So, number three, we need to be ready at all times. A few years ago, Angela and I visited the Archbishop Binding Memorial Church Cathedral in Lagos, Nigeria. We had been invited to a midweek prayer meeting. Now, we thought we'd be joining a handful of people praying quietly but when we arrived, we were met by more than 800 men and women praying up a storm. It was breathtaking. I heard later that the church was about to buy a hospital to provide medical care for the poor in the neighboring community. And I wondered what could possibly inspire such devotion. And then I saw the church's vision vision statement, which read, to be the leading diocese in the Church of Nigeria, preparing this nation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Wow, now that's a vision. They really believe that Jesus is coming back to this earth in power and majesty, and they want to get everyone, everyone ready for it. I was profoundly challenged by their vision, their faith, and their commitment to the gospel and I still am. It's changed my thinking about Advent. Now, I still enjoy all of the excitement preparing for Christmas, but now I'm much more conscious of the need to get ready for the second coming of Christ and also help those around me get ready as well. So what about you? Jesus is coming. Are you ready? It could be sooner than you think. Amen? Good morning. I'm Good morning. I'm so glad to be with all of you. I want to share to today's agenda with you as we move into our convention. We will first go over the rules of order as we are using the Zoom webinar venue today. During our business meeting, we will hold our annual election for committees and offices, followed by a short break. Then we will come back together to vote on the 2021 budget. Following the business meeting, the standing committee will share an update and then offer answers to questions received in advance and from the floor. We will take a few minutes to offer thanks to outgoing staff and committee members before we adjourn. And then we will have closing prayers together. Now, uh, Tom Sands is going to share the rules of the order for today's meeting. 
Mr. President, clergy and lay delegates, we're following the rules of order as set forth in pages 38 to 42 of the Constitution canons with rules of order of the Anglican Diocese of Pittsburgh. Uh, as you know, with virtual meetings, these rules have been have the following accommodations to meet the limitations for the Zoom online webinar format. We're using this format to try to make the meeting as effective as possible, not to limit discussion, so there'll be plenty of time for discussions. We'll use the raise hand feature to allow for discussions of motions and to allow for questions at the appointed time. Uh, as hands are raised, participants will receive a request to unmute and speak to the convention. Please click the participant button at the bottom of your screen and bring up the participant window. This is what Sarah walked through before. We're just gonna walk through it one more time for those folks who may have joined. Um, at the bottom of the list of participants, there's a button for raise hand. And feel free to go ahead and raise your hand right now just to kind of give it a shot. Yeah, I can see lots of folks are raising their hand, great. Um, that's what you need to do to ask a question. And then when your question have, has been answered or you don't wanna ask anymore, um, click the lower hand button and that will lower the hand down and we should see those go back down and we see them going down now. Great, you've all got this. This will be easy today. Um, during the meeting, you can click on the Q&A button and submit a written question to the panelists. These questions will only be visible to the panelists uh, until which uh, they're answered. We're gonna be using the Zoom polling modules to take all votes. This allows us to have a record of all counts for reporting purposes and future reference. Our judge of elections, Sarah Qualick, will demonstrate the feature using a sample vote at this time. Right before I do that, <clears throat> excuse me, I did put this in the Q&A, but I wanna make sure um, because I just discovered it this morning that if you do use the raise hand feature to speak and we do um, ask you to unmute so that you can talk to everybody in the meeting, your screen will be visible as the speaker. So if you want people to see your face, you'll need to turn your camera on. If you're not in a position to have your camera on, we would love for you to keep that off just so that you know that people will be able to see um, if you have your camera on. All right, let's jump into the voting. I wanna first explain to you how the votes will be counted today. For ballots where we have only two candidates, or where there's, for instance, a yes, no vote, um, we'll be, we will be electing the candidate with the most votes, so the majority. For ballots with more than two candidates, if there's a majority for one candidate on the first ballot, that candidate will be elected. If there's not a majority, we'll take the candidate with the least votes and drop them off and do a second ballot, and then the majority from that ballot will be elected, the candidate with the majority from that ballot. All right, um, in some cases today, our uh, election will include multiple candidates. And when we get to a place where we might need to do a runoff, I'll be sure to just let you know how we're doing that at that time. Um, one little tag to note is that there is a situation like in the array where we're gonna be electing two people. And so you'll have a little bit of a different polling feature where you'll be able to choose more than one person when you vote and I'll again walk you through that at that time. For right now, um, we're going to try a sample ballot. We're, we're going to elect one person for the Committee for the Furtherance of Wisdom and Grace. So we're gonna launch that poll now. If you can please cast your vote. And we're gonna be closing the voting in about five seconds. All right, I'm ending the poll. Now, <laughs> I'm just gonna let you guys know that the actual, <laughs> the actual results of this poll are overwhelmingly for Jesus, but I want you to see what it would look like if we had to do a second ballot. So let's just say that Abraham had the, le the least votes in this situation, but we didn't have a clear majority. At this time then, we would launch a second ballot where Abraham would drop off and we would again vote for the committee um, for the furtherance of wisdom and grace. So Kristen, if you can launch the second poll, this is what it would look like. It will say second ballot, and you'll again be asked to vote for who you want to elect to this position. All right, I think you guys can see how this works. Um, we're very excited to announce that Jesus has been elected to this committee. Thank you for voting. All right, in addition to the rules of order, I do wanna note a couple of things about our format today. 
Um, your screen view is determined by the meeting host, so it won't, you can't change what you're looking at. Um, I believe she has a speaker view. I spoke earlier and said that you could see all the panelists. That's what I see, but <laughs> what you see is the speaker. So if Kristen changes her screen, that's what you'll be seeing. Um, the chat feature is turned off for this meeting. So I, I see that um, I've been answering several of your questions. Um, and I actually see a question from Tara right now uh, that is about um, tech support. So um, Kristen, if you could answer that for for Tara while I'm giving this that, uh, this little outline, that would be great. If a question gets answered under your Q&A, you'll be able to see the answered questions um, as, as Tom mentioned before. But we also can answer like some of you um, may have seen that I answered you privately because it wasn't a question for everybody. So there are some ways that we can communicate with you using Q&A without it getting cumbersome um, in the chat. So chat is turned off. If you do have technical issues, um, there is a number, I just realized that's in my notes, Kristen, so I'm gonna announce the number. It's 412-328-1957. So I'm gonna say that one more time. You might wanna write it down if you encounter any technical issues through the call. It's 412-328-1957. And that's for David Sad. He'll pick up and be happy to help you um, figure out whatever's going on. I think that's everything we need to cover before we begin our convention. Jeff, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. I call this 155th Annual Convention of the Anglican Diocese of Pittsburgh back to order. I call upon Mrs. Shannon Sims, Secretary to the Convention, to certify a quorum. You're muted, Shannon. Shannon, you're not muted anymore. Can you say what you said already? Mr. President, clergy and lay deputies to convention, according to Article 5, Section 1 of our Constitution, a quorum is present. Thank you. In addition to the members of the standing committee who are not deputies, I also want to welcome members of the Board of Trustees and the Diocesan Council that are not deputies and Bishop Grant Lemarquin. We would like to give them seat and voice, but no vote. I will entertain a motion to give seat and voice to the non-deputy representatives of the Board of Trustees, Diocesan Council, and Bishop Lemarquin at this time. <clears throat> this is Tom Sands, I so move. Elaine Storm, I second the motion. Are there any questions, discussions? Please uh, use the raised hand function to speak. I don't see any raised hands. Okay. Okay. Um, is, uh, oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> All right, we are going to, we're going to launch the vote to give seat and voice to the non-deputy representatives of the Board of Trustees, Diocesan Council, and Bishop Lamarcon. Uh, Kristen, can you um, put the poll up for us now? Please cast your yes or no vote now. All right, I'm going to close voting in five seconds. Thank you for voting, the motion carries. I want to acknowledge again, oh, the uh, members of the staff who are present here today to serve the convention. Canon Joanne Martin, Nick Storm, Sarah Qualick, Kristen Paris, and Bonnie Catalino. Thank you for all your help in managing this online convention. I want to welcome everyone that is joining us uh, through our live stream today. We are glad to be with you in spirit. I call upon Mr. Tim Moore, President of Diocesan Council and Chair of the Nominating Committee to begin our election process today. Let me know, let me also thank you in advance for your service uh, to the diocese. 
Mr. President, clergy and lay delegates of the convention, on behalf of the nominations committee, I have presented the slate of candidates to you via email on December 4th of 2020. I will entertain a motion that Dr. Leslie Thyberg be added to the ballot as a lay candidate for the provincial assembly. Andrea Millard, I so move. David Grissom, I second the motion. Are there any questions or discussions? Uh, please use the raise hand function to speak. I don't see any raised hands. Okay. I'm going to launch the vote that Leslie Thyberg be added to the ballot, <clears throat> excuse me, as a lay candidate for provincial assembly. Please cast your yes or no vote now. Voting will end in five seconds. The motion carries. We are going to proceed at this time to vote by committee or office. I do need to pause for just a moment because, <clears throat> excuse me, I have had a couple of questions I'd like to just answer live quickly um, that have to do with our voting process. So we're not going to be displaying the numerical votes on the screen as we did the last time. Um, to answer your question, Joel, um, we will, I will be announcing the results at the end of each section that we vote on. So we'll vote for um, clergy and lay um, offices, and then I'll announce the, the, the elect, elected candidates for both at the end of that time after we do the, all of the polling for that section. Um, if anybody has questions after our elections today, you're welcome to address those to me, and I can certainly give you um, more details about the, the majority votes, but they are not visible to everybody when we show them on the screen. And so it's better for me just to announce the results of the votes for today's purposes. Um, there was another question and it disappeared from my screen. So I'm hoping that somebody answered it um, and we're gonna move, move forward. All right, so we're gonna proceed to vote by committee or office. The results of the voting for each committee or office will be shown on the screen and announced before moving on to the next one. Um, we're gonna start today with our standing committee. We're electing one lay member and one clergy member. Kristen is going to launch the vote for lay candidates to elect Ann McCarthy or Wick Stevens. And I would uh, ask you to vote, ask you to cast your vote now. We're gonna close. <coughs> excuse me, close the voting in five seconds. There is a clear majority. Wick Stevens has been elected to the standing committee, <clears throat> excuse me, as our lay member. I just did what I said I wasn't going to do. I was gonna announce them at the end. Um, we're gonna go ahead now and launch the vote for clergy candidates. Kristen, if you can put that on the screen for us, we're voting for Keith Almond, Herb Bailey, or Eric Rhodes. Please cast your votes now. All right, I'm gonna end this, <clears throat> excuse me, so sorry. I'm gonna end this poll in five seconds. As we don't have a clear majority, we need to do a second ballot for this. Um, we are going to drop Keith Allman's name from the ballot and Kristen is going to run a second ballot now. Please vote for her Bailey or Eric Rhodes. Polling will end in five seconds.
Thank you for casting your votes. I'm now going to announce, I already announced, I'm sorry, I preemptively announced that the lay candidate elected to standing committee is Wick Stevens and the clergy candidate elected to standing committee is Herb Bailey. All right, we're going to now move to the committee on canons. We will elect one lay member and one clergy member. Kristen will launch the vote for lay candidates to elect James Carney or Charles Metcalf. Please cast your votes now. We'll end the poll in five seconds. And Kristen is now going to launch the vote for clergy candidates to elect Dave Ketter or John Park. Please cast your votes now. We'll end the poll in five seconds. Thank you for voting. Charles Metcalf has been elected as the lay member to the Committee on Canons, and Dave Ketter has been elected as the clergy member to the Committee on Canons. Let's move on to the array. We will elect two lay members and one clergy member to the array. This vote, as I said before, is going to operate a little differently and that you're going to need to select two lay candidates for the array. So as Kristen launches the poll for the lay candidates, I'd ask you to please select two names only from the names below, Angel Bailey, Marilyn Knotts, Wallace Scott, and Nathan Twitchell. Please cast your vote for two candidates only. All right, we're gonna end the poll in five seconds. Give me just a moment. All right, we're now going to vote for, we're now going to vote for the clergy candidate for the array and Kristen's going to launch the poll. Um, we're going to elect either Andrew DeFusco, Francis Metcalf, or Paul Sutcliffe. You will vote for one candidate in this, um, in this poll, please. Could we please, please cast your vote now? Sarah, could we advance to that slide? Uh, um, oh, Kristen, can you? Um, Oh, it, it's, can you see it now, Joanne? Great. All right, I'll end the vote in five seconds. All right, I'm going to announce the uh, results for this poll. I'm sorry, it's going to take me just a moment. So I need to toggle here. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry about that. 
All right, so for our lay candidates for the array, um, we have elected Marilyn Knotts and Wallace Scott. And for our clergy candidate for the array, we have elected Andrew DeFusco. Thank you for voting. We're gonna move on now to provincial assembly. We will elect two lay delegates, two lay alternates, one clergy delegate and one clergy alternate. Again, this is a slightly different, uh, we're gonna to continue to vote um, in a similar way that we just did with the array where we will vote for two candidates for the lay, uh, the lay, the lay seat that's open. <laughs> Um, and so I'm going to ask as we launch the, the vote for the lay candidates that you vote for two from Delia Bowers, Bianchin, Shannon Sims, and Leslie Thyberg. Um, please cast your vote now. The person with the least votes will become our alternate, our lay alternate. I'm going to end the poll in five seconds. All right, thank you for voting. Uh, we are now going to vote for the clergy candidate. Um, and uh, this, as Kristen launches the poll, you'll be voting for one person in this. Um, there we go. One, I'm sorry, one delegate uh, and one alternate. So you'll vote for one of Andrew Millard, Andrea Millard or Stephen Knoll. Kristen, if you can launch that for me. Thank you. We'll close the poll in five seconds. All right, I'll announce the election um, for the lay, <clears throat> excuse me, for the lay delegates for provincial assembly. Shannon Sims and Leslie Thyberg will be our lay delegates and Delia Bowers Bianchin will be our lay alternate. For clergy, Stephen Knoll will be our clergy delegate and Andrea Millard will be our clergy alternate. All right, finally, um, we have a very simple election to do here for our board of trustees. We need to elect one, we have one candidate. So because we can't do a voice vote, we're gonna go ahead and do a yes, no vote um, to affirm Alan Com for the board of trustees. If you can please cast your vote now, the poll has been launched. I'll close the poll in five seconds. Thank you for voting. Alan Com has been elected as a member of the Board of Trustees. We are done with this section, Jeff, if you'd like to yeah. take us into our break. Again, thank you. Thank you all for this great work. At this time, uh, we will take a 10 minute break. Uh, there will be uh, a song uh, being played throughout our break, um, and then we will return to address the budget. Uh, see you in 10 minutes.
bind us together in holy love. Come with your peace, with your invitation, bind us together in holy
Ready? Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, again, welcome back from our break. Uh, please uh, turn your attention now to Kirk Batola as he presents the budget for 2021. Good morning. The 2021 budget, uh, do we have a uh, slide of the budget? Thank you. Um, the 2021 budget reflects the goal of preparing the soil for the arrival of our new bishop. You'll see the budget reflects a total income of $826,000, uh, which is a reduction over, of over $170,000 from 2020. In reviewing the income, uh, the budget reflects a possible reduction in parish operating incomes as a result of the uncertainty of COVID. Our expectation is that parishes will continue to provide 10% of their operating income as their godly share. Uh, that said, we've budgeted for a total godly share of $660,000. In addition, we have a one-time source uh, of uh, uh, 
from the uh, included from the PPP loan of $98,000. Of course, this will not be a source of income in future years. These two items together make up 92% of the budgeted income. The key expenses are comprised of compensation, ministries and outreach, and the special category, which together make up 70% of our expenses. Uh, compensation and benefits total 223,000. This reflects a over a $400,000 decrease from 2020 is a result of reducing funding associated with the Office of the Bishop and the Canon positions. 2021 compensation includes the Director of Administration, the Director of Communications, the Finance and Bookkeeping Function, uh, and the Executive Admi Administrator to the Bishop. Ministry and Outreach category includes the National Share and funds associated with Convention Clergy Retreat in the support of the curates grandfathered into the curacy program, as well as other ministry-related expenses. The Special category includes Severance, and funds associated with the search for a new bishop. In sum, the Standing Committee believes that this budget manages for the uncertainty of the impact of COVID on parish operating budgets and will equip the diocese and offices to focus on 2021 in effectively preparing the ground for the arrival of a new bishop. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. All right. We do have some raised hands, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to try to address these in the order they were received, excuse me. So we're going to take, ooh, we're gonna take a question from John Kearns. And I've asked you to unmute John. Go okay. ahead, John. Uh, apparently my camera is not working at the moment. Sorry okay. about that. At any no rate, problem. I am. I am John Kearns from Christ Our Hope Anglican Church in Natrona Heights. Uh, I'm a lay deputy. Uh, my question is looking at the budget under the legal governance uh, between 2020 and 2021, uh, that number increased almost tenfold. I'm just curious as to why. Yeah, sure. The, um, uh, based upon the issues that the diocese dealt with uh, disciplinary uh, procedures, uh, as well as um, anticipated issues uh, going forward, we got through uh, 2020 with an inordinate amount of pro bono legal work. Um, so we think we were grossly, uh, we grossly under budgeted last year, and we anticipate that we'll require uh, uh, um, legal resources uh, going into uh, 2021, uh, and also that's uh, support for governance as well. We're going to be doing uh, work associated around uh, 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 clarifying um, the governance of the diocese and making sure that the uh, uh, our governing bodies are equipped to understand their function and uh, and how we operate effectively together. Thank you. Our next question comes from Charles Metcalf. I've asked you to unmute. Let me see. Charlie, are you able to unmute? Um, I'm clicking the button. For some reason, Charlie is not un not able to unmute. Perhaps I don't. I'm not sure what's happening there. Oh, you're unmuted, Charlie. Oh no, now he's not allowed to talk. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. All right, Kristen, I, I'm not able to get to make him able to talk right now. Are you able to? I will see. Uh, there is somebody is noting in the question that Charlie could use potentially the, the Q&A. Um, I have clicked all of the buttons that I can click to Sarah. Okay, uh, let's see if it will work. We're gonna try and take a question from Liz Smith in the meantime. Um, Liz, I've asked you to unmute. Liz, 
Liz, are you able to unmute? Ah, Charlie's computer dropped off. Yes, he can come to yours, Francis, and ask the question if you can just raise your hand so I can find you. All right. I'm Okay, we're going to see if we can um, get a question from Patrick Roddy. I've asked you to unmute. There you go. Go ahead and talk. Uh, Patrick Roddy, Christ the Redeemer in Cannonsburg. Um, I was curious about the line item for Bishop Murdoch assistance on page two, what that was. Uh, Bishop Murdoch is going to be helping us with, uh, he's done work uh, around the process of selecting a bishop. So he's going to be uh, supporting us uh, as we're defining the process uh, prior to uh, advancing the bishop. So. Thank you. Okay, we're going to try one more time to see if Liz Smith can unmute. Um, all right, we're going to see if we can take a Oh goodness, my screen is changing. We're gonna try and take a take a question from Robert. Oh boy, I'm my screen keeps changing. Sorry about that. Uh, Robert Richard, you have the floor. <laughs> um, is it possible for individuals to make donations to the diocesan budget to help on the income side? Absolutely. Um, the, uh, I, I don't, uh, I believe there's a, uh, a link on the website. Is that correct, Sarah? Yes. In fact, um, you should, if you haven't gotten it already, you should have a letter coming to you that has a, a that has an ask for people to give. Um, as we do have some of these extenuating expenses this year, we have made a, that request at the end of the year. It's also available on the website. There is a give link on the website you can go to directly, or you can mail checks to the office. Thank you for asking. And the link is pitanglican.org slash giving. Thanks, Kristen. All right. I don't see any other hands raised. Um, if Sarah, then uh, if there are no other questions, I would just like to take a minute to thank Nick Storm, uh, who just did uh, unbelievable uh, amount of work in uh, working with the standing committee and uh, working with the uh, office staff, uh, helping to prepare multiple iterations of this uh, budget between uh, the, the beginning of this convention and this uh, point. So I just wanted to express our gratitude to them. Okay, thank you, Kirk. Um, at, at this time, uh, this budget has been presented by the Diocesan Council. I call upon Tim Moore to make a motion to approve this budget. I move that we approve the budget for 2021 as presented. Again, are there any questions or discussion? Uh, please use the raised hand function to speak. I believe we might have one from Glenn Kreitzer. I've just allowed you to unmute. Yes, I was just going to offer the second for that. Somehow yeah. our rules of order don't require that. Yeah, the, okay. it, the, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Are you asking me to go ahead, Jeff? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> we, we aren't required to have a second when the budget is coming out of council and council moves um, for the budget to be um, to be voted upon. Do we have any other questions regarding uh, this motion before we go on? Oh, I do have one more from Patrick Roddy. I've asked you to unmute. Uh, thanks, one more question. Does Bishop Hobby's resignation have any effect on our ability to get PPP loan forgiveness? Uh, not that we're aware of, I, I would... Uh, um, my, my understanding is that the term of PP loan forgiveness was through um, payroll projection into um, September, October, and so we're we're beyond that. So I don't believe it does. 
Correct. He resigned in October. Is that correct? Or that that was why I was flagging that. I just I didn't know when the resignation was effective. This is this is Andy. He did resign in October, and the resignation does not have any impact on the PPP forgiveness. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other hands raised. Um, I'm going to launch the vote to approve the budget for 2021 as presented. Kristen, if you can put that on the screen for us. Okay. Sarah, I, I don't see one at the moment. I'll let me create one quickly. I bet, I bet that was that was all me, Kristen. I apologize okay. in advance to all we of you. Can, I put all those polls together, but I forgot the budget poll. Forgive me. We can uh, invite Joanne Martin to lead us in a quick prayer while we get that poll ready for you guys. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Lord of us and have always provided we recognize um, that this budget represents more than money. It represents direction. It represents um, gains and losses. It represents many things. And so as we have in every other area, we yield our money matters to you too, Lord. And we ask for your help. Pray this in your name, amen. Thank you. We are ready to launch the poll. Great. Thank you, Kristen. If you can cast your vote now to approve the 2021 budget as presented. I'll end the poll in five seconds. budget is approved. At this time, I believe uh, David Grissom is going to take, uh, take over. Good morning. Uh, my name is David Grissom and I'd like to uh, give you an update from the standing committee. Uh, I want to thank my fellow members on the committee. Uh, just say that, um, thank, I'm thankful for their dedication. We're working hard. Uh, the eight of us, along with Bishop Minns and our chancellor, have a Zoom meeting every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock. We also meet one evening a week at 8 p.m. And uh, then some of us are on various subcommittees that uh, also meet during the week. So we're working very hard and we're very thankful for those that have come alongside of us. Uh, and supported us, the diocesan staff, uh, those working on the budget and the diocesan council. And it's been a real pleasure uh, to work uh, during this time, these past years with uh, Jeff Wiley and Tom Sands, who will be going off of the standing committee at the end of the year. And we look forward to working with Wick Stevens and Herb Bailey. And uh, we will try and find something for you guys to do. Uh, we've had to make, make some difficult decisions this year. Uh, we realize that we cannot do everything and must focus, as Kirk said, on preparing the soil for the next bishop. And so uh, in the coming season, uh, as a way to prepare things, our focus is going to be on several things. Uh, in no particular order, uh, let me read those to you. Our communications. We will seek to elevate and extend the excellent communication work done at the diocesan office. Administration. We will seek to consolidate and elevate our office functions so that they may perform consistently, effectively, and efficiently. In the area of governance, we will seek to bring clarity to the roles and functions of our governing bodies so that people who are doing the good work within the diocese understand their responsibilities and can fulfill them faithfully. 
compliance, we will seek to bring clarity, transparency, and appropriate controls to the various processes that coordinate our lives together, ensuring that problems are addressed appropriately. In the area of clergy support and care, uh, we're so thankful for Bishop Martin Minns, and he is uh, well underway on this, talking to our clergy, and he has Zoom meetings scheduled with our clergy, and so uh, we are very grateful that this has already started. Our key project in 2021 will be overseeing the definition and adoption of a robust and transparent process for the election of a new bishop. While the standing committee will support prayer and worship, discipleship and mission in the lives of our parishes, this will not be advanced through the positions of the canons who serve the community in 2020. In 2021, we will not be funding the positions of canon of prayer and worship, canon of discipleship, and canon of mission. We are grateful for the good work that Karen Stevenson, Joanne Martin, and Tracy Russell have delivered into our lives. Many of you have mentioned that you are praying for the diocese and that you are praying for us, and we, we do appreciate that and ask for your continued prayers as we go forward. At this time, uh, I believe we're going to take questions. I'm not sure if any have been submitted ahead of time, but uh, we're going to take, take questions. Please use the raise hand function if you would like to ask a question and Sarah will announce if hands are raised. All right, we do have a, a couple of raised hands. We're gonna start with Don Shepson. I'm asking you to unmute now. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. I'm I'm uh, particularly interested in knowing what the vote on the budget was. If we're talking about robust transparency, it's, it seems very important that we have a clear understanding of the vote on the budget and any vote for that matter. So just to announce that it passed is not transparency. Thank you. Does somebody want to weigh in on the panel in answering that? Um, as as um, Sarah said earlier, we can the this particular format for Zoom that we we were using to eliminate a lot of the background confusion that happened before does not allow for the the viewing of the poll results, but we can make those available. Uh, she she had mentioned that before, so we will we will be sure to do that. Thank, thank you, Doug. Um, Kathy Walter, I'm asking you to unmute now. Go ahead. Kathy, did you have a question? All right. Um, I'm not hearing anything from Kathy. You're unmuted, but we can't hear anything. If you do have a question and you're not able to speak, if you want to try and type that in the Q&A, that would be great. Sarah? Go oh, yeah. Um, I, I just did see the, the numbers on the, on the budget. So just to, to get those out there now, uh, the budget vote was 147 yes and seven no. That's 95% for and 5% against. Great, thank you, Doug. Thank you. Um, we're, since I can't hear Kathy, we're gonna go to Robert Richard. Um, I've, I'm unmuting you now. Uh, you can speak. Is there gonna be consideration um, of alternative structures for the Episcopate? Um, is the standing committee or some um, appointed committee um, going to look to see whether we might have um, regional bishops or uh, bishops who continue to serve as rectors of parishes, a, a bishop who consider, consider, continues to serve as rector of a parish or other sorts of alternatives to the traditional episcopate? 
Dave, do you want to uh, lean in on this one? Well, um, what I'd like to say is the search for the new bishop is going to really be focused, um, you know, in the next month. And first of all, we have to really examine our um, canons and constitutions with our chancellor. And that's, you know, that's our first step to really look at those and, and see what, what is the way forward. Uh, there is also now the Archbishop has uh, something called the Archbishop Customary. And the last uh, two bishops that have been chosen in the, uh, I believe, um, in the Southwest Arizona, Texas area and the Great Lakes, um, that's the work. Uh, the Archbishop has a customary and a, a, a process and Bishop Murdoch comes alongside of the diocese and works with the standing committee and the search committee. And so right now, um, you know, our first step uh, with our new standing committee will be to really examine our constitutions and canons and make sure that we are within, within those parameters. Thank you, David. Uh, I don't see any, oh, there is another hand raised. I'm going to allow Andrew to Fusco to speak. Oh, I just hit the mute button. Sorry, Andrew, hang on just a second. <laughs> All right, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Go ahead. This is working? Sorry, yes, okay. you're all good. Um, I was just hoping maybe if the standing committee could speak to, uh, I'm most familiar with Ken and Karen Stevenson's role, but I imagine this question might apply similarly to the other ones. Um, but it looked like there was a projected surplus in the budget, if I read that correctly. And so if it was kind of a purely financial decision to kind of let those folks go, I think I'm able to, to make some sense of that. But if, if not, and I think the language is used of um, like a prioritization or kind of reflecting the priorities of the diocese, I'm just wondering if you could speak to that because I know um, Karen, at least I don't know about the other canons, but Karen Stevenson, at least I know, was fundraising a huge amount of her own salary and then a huge amount of the programming money that, that went into the curacy and, and the other things that she was working on. And I just wondered if you could speak to that. I know she was working on the curates that we have in place. I know she was our primary diocesan liaison to the seminary, I think, if, if that's right. And so her work with young leaders, I think it would be safe to say is a, an ongoing priority of the diocese. I know she was I think the principal person involved in at least the active church planting work in the diocese that I'm aware of and the transition of leadership in the existing church plant in state college. Um, and then the only kind of concerted diocesan effort at the redevelopment of churches with the high potential for redevelopment in the diocese. I know she was the, the principal person working with the bishop on those projects as well. And so it seems like that's, those are pretty high priority things and, particularly if there was some money there and if she was fundraising a good portion of it. I was just wondering if you could speak to that because I think her work from my perspective is profoundly valuable to the diocese. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kirk, can you uh, uh, respond to this, please? Sure. Um, the, uh, the standing committee uh, agrees uh, with you in terms of the uh, assessment of uh, Karen Stevenson's work and its value. And that's uh, one of the reasons why the standing committee chose to grandfather the, um, uh, the active curates in the curacy program. Uh, part of the, uh, it wasn't a financial decision, uh, uh, principally, principally that traditionally when, a, when a, a new bishop comes in, the staff offer their resignations right, because of uh, a new leader comes in and, and the, it's the tradition to give the new leader the opportunity to create uh, their team, create their priorities. And the, so uh, partly informed by preparing the diocese by we, we really um, uh, ended the funding for the diocesan level programs uh, other than the communications, administrative, and financial uh, functions uh, in order to improve the uh, focus and improve the performance of that hub and to 
uh, lay the groundwork so that the uh, um, when the new bishop comes in, the new bishop would be in a position to lay in uh, the, the bishop would lay in the bishop's priorities, programs, team, etc. And the so it's it wasn't related to funding, nor did it have anything to do with the merit or value of, of the work that was doing that. There, there was there was nothing. Uh, uh, everything that was not funded in 2021 was a good thing. <laughs> it was like they were all good, godly uh, initiatives. The, the decision was to uh, to stop the funding on the dio uh, diocesan level programs uh, uh, across the board. Thank you. That that makes a lot of sense to me. And as a rector, who's come into parishes, I totally. Um, agree with that tradition and it, it makes our work easier. I think maybe in hindsight, it might've been, um, I, I might've liked to see the standing committee allow that to happen when the new bishop came rather than preemptively, but I appreciate that and that, that makes sense to me. Thank you. Um, we don't have any other hands raised at this time, but there is a question I think that it would be helpful for the standing committee to address in the Q and A from Linda Schink with the rising cases of COVID are there any direction or guidelines from the diocese on holding in-person Sunday services and other activities like Bible study? Is there anyone want to address that on the panel? Um, Kirk, do you want to uh, respond again on that? I'm oh, sorry, could you ask the question again? With the rising cases of COVID, are there is there any direction or guidelines from the diocese on holding in-person Sunday services and other activities like Bible study? So, they, so the the diocese has issued guidelines um, earlier in the year. The uh, uh, we haven't issued uh, new guidelines, although we would encourage. You know the the rectors and the lay leaders to uh, you know pay attention, uh, comply with the law, and uh, exercise good judgment and safety and and, um, and charity uh, in terms of uh, respecting the safety of others. Thanks, Kirk. Ardith Smith, you can ask your question now. Thank you so much. I'm wondering um, what is happening with the program that Joanne Martin. Uh, vessels of honor that she instigated. And um, I understand that's not part of the budget. So I'm wondering what is going to be happening with that program going forward, because I think there are people involved in that right now. There, there are two. So the vessels of honor, the diocese is going to be supporting vessels of honor. It's a, it's a two year uh, pro, uh, pilot and it'll complete its uh, the first year of its pilot in April. So the diocese is gonna be supporting the completion of the first uh, year of the pilot. And uh, Joanne is uh, working with the folks um, that are engaged in the, uh, in the pilot to determine uh, what that might look like going forward. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. At this time, I don't see any other hands raised. Are there any other questions before we move on? Oh, there are some, let me just check these. Um, Jeff, can you, can you open up the Q&A and see if, there, if you'd like to address the okay. two questions? I'm sorry, one, one other uh, point, sorry, I wanna share was that the, uh, if, um, I think it was Andrew had asked about the budget, looking at the, uh, the surplus in the budget. The thing to keep in mind with what appears to be a surplus in the budget is that that's uh, made up, uh, comprised of the um, $98,000, the $46,000 comes from the $98,000 PPP loan, which is a one-time uh, event. So uh, technically uh, on an ongoing basis, it's uh, there's not a surplus uh, there. However, we also believe that the godly share of will be better than we budgeted for. Um, uh, so we believe that we'll be in, in good shape. That said, it's not, uh, I wouldn't characterize it as a, uh, as a surplus operating budget.
Jeff, did you want to address either of those questions? Yeah, I, I just want to, yeah, the, the first one, um, you know, that I think that there is a need to consider an alternative structure for the Episcopate, a study and discussion needs done. Um, I just wanted to, um, just to lean in a little bit on that question, um, on would there be a, open for a discussion on changes on leading uh, that would lead to the canons that would reflect structure changes? Um, how how the process is going to work? We we are uh, as Dave Grissom uh, had mentioned that uh, that we we are going to have uh, it, it's under the Archbishop's initiative, and we have he has assigned Bishop Bill Murdoch. Uh, to be uh, walking alongside of us, and uh, Bishop Murdoch is is going to assess and walk and make uh, make recommendations on how uh, and what's our best uh, path forward. Um, and so, uh, so that is um, this is something that is uh, a new program that the Archbishop. Uh, that had realized that there must be a lot more in-depth studies on the diocese and on each of the candidates so that there is a better fit and that, that everyone is set up for the best success going forward and be mission driven and, and, and be a church that is effective in proclaiming Christ our Lord. I hope I addressed your end your question there. Um, is there anyone that wants to address any of the other um, uh, Dave on uh, it, the de the definition of customary I I'll, I'll throw that one to you <laughs> that, so uh, uh, you, you're, you're the one I'll get back I'll get back to you on that one <laughs> We, we, we as a standing committee have only, uh, and actually uh, um, Dave Grissom is the only real person that had significant conversations with Bishop Murdoch. Um, we have just been getting us to get to this point. So um, the, the, there's going to be much better understanding and a lot more clarity coming forward in 2021 on our next steps uh, toward looking at uh, our, our next leader uh, and our next uh, bishop. So I, I would like to say that that we are we are not in a bit in a rush. We're not you know some some have shown concern that we that there's going to be a rush to do this, and I want you to know that we you know this is not going to be something that uh, Bishop Murdoch said that this process just his guess is an 18 month to 24 month process. Now, I'm not saying that's what it is. That's just his guess on it from his past work. There are no other raised hands at this time. Okay. Well, I thank you again for all of your, uh, um, all of your time and support. Uh, David, do you wanna continue on? Well, at this time, I believe that, uh, Sarah, are we going to run the PowerPoint of, uh, of the folks that we would like to thank? Kristen will put that up on the screen for us. I'm not going to read through all the names, but uh, the transitions in the office and on the various committees, uh, we want to show those folks. And I'll let you uh, let, Chris, let Kristen run that, those slides. Uh, again, say how very thankful uh, we are to all of these all of these folks. Jeff, I'll hand it hand it back to you. All right, and 
again, I, I just want to thank all of you that are present here today um, in taking ownership and, and leading our diocese, um, all of us together. And with that said, in consideration of the work that we have accomplished, I will entertain a motion that this convention be adjourned. Lane Storm, I second. Andrea Millard, I second the motion. Are there any questions or discussions? Please use the raised hand function to speak. I see no raised hands. So we will go ahead and launch the vote that this convention be adjourned. Please vote now. I'll close the voting in five seconds. We have unanimously voted to adjourn. I declare this convention adjourn. Ken and Joanne Martin will lead us in closing prayers. Okay, that's better. <laughs> um, our structure for closing prayers is that there will be a spoken prayer and then a pause to allow you to add your prayers at home to the spoken prayer. And then we'll conclude the pause with the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We acknowledge that this diocese only exists because of you and that without you, we would not even have a purpose for being gathered. We acknowledge that everything we do is for you. If we are ever tempted to forget that, remind us. Thank you for loving us and for calling us into your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the work that has been done today. I pray for the standing committee, for diocesan council, and for all the leaders we elected today. Anoint them with your spirit for the difficult task of leadership that lies ahead this year. May they seek you in all that they do and give them the grace to hear you together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. We pray for Bishop Hobby and Canon Sherry as they prepare to move and for the revealing of our next bishop. Please lead us with swift clarity through a peaceful and ordered search process guided by prayer and mutual submission. We give thanks for Bishop Menz and his willingness to serve alongside us in this next year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember the lost, those who don't know you or the purpose for their lives. May all our efforts be for them, that they would be joined with us in loving community in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The night before you died, you prayed for the unity of your people. And you told us that unity in you would be a hallmark by which we would witness your presence to the world. Build among the congregations and clergy of this diocese true unity, founded on mercy, honesty, gracious dealings, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As re requested by the standing committee, I do give thanks for the service of the Reverend Canon Karen Stevenson, the Reverend Canon Tracy Russell, and my own service, the service we offered the clergy and people of this diocese through our ministry on the bishop's staff. Lord, I pray that as our employed roles end, the seeds of ministry themselves would not be lost 
that our efforts to build unity, mutual care, concern for the lost and effective leadership among the congregations of this diocese would not end. May those seeds still bear fruit in their season for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, I thank you for the Christmas season we are about to enter. That first Christmas was a time of deep suffering darkness, and yet you agreed to come to us within it to give us hope and the possibility for a different future. Do that again, we pray. At the end of what has been an arduous and painful year, visit us again with peace and hope. As the prayer book prays, grant us brave and enduring hearts that we may strengthen one another until the disciplines and testing of these days are ended and you again give peace in our time. We trust you and it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you again all. You have uh, pray that you all have a very blessed day and uh, and, and the season and uh, and it's always a privilege in uh, in serving our Lord alongside you all.